10 Secrets to Prepare a PCR Reaction Preparing a PCR reaction is one of the important steps in PCR amplification. TIC DNA polymerase, DNTPS, PCR reaction buffer, PCR primer, and template DNA are important ingredients of PCR reaction. Preparing a perfect PCR reaction is key to success amplification. Not only amplification but a specific amplification is a goal for our PCR reaction. We don't want unwanted DNA bands and primer dimers. The primer dimers are the foe for the PCR reaction. We can divide our PCR reagents into three categories. Category 1, very important, core, ingredients, DNTPS, primer, template DNA, and took DNA polymerase. Category 2, crucial, subsidiary, ingredients, PCR reaction buffer, MGCL2, DMSO, and other PCR enhancers. Category 3, least important, water and DNA gel loading dye. Some of the ready-to-use master mix contains the gel loading dye in the master mix that does not have any significant role in the amplification. We can avoid it or add it later during the gel electrophoresis. Without Category 1 reagents, the PCR reaction cannot happen. We cannot amplify DNA. However, the subsidiary ingredients which are the PCR enhancers are not as important as core ingredients. But enhancers are very important for the amplification of tough templates such as GC-rich template and long DNA template. Note, the amplification of long template DNA required a special type of PCR setup called a long-range PCR. Category 3 PCR ingredients are least important, it does not have any notable impact on the amplification process. Here in this article, we will discuss 10 secrets that nobody tells you about the perfect PCR reaction. 1. Proper DNA Extraction The mantra for successful PCR amplification depends on how we extract our DNA. No one takes DNA extraction as a serious business. But trust me if you extract a high quality nearly 1.80 extra pure DNA, your 50% work for the PCR reaction is almost done. The impurities present into the template DNA hinders in the amplification called PCR inhibitors. SDS, phenol, and proteins are common among them. No matter, how perfectly you optimize your reaction if your DNA is not properly extracted, your PCR's future will be in danger. However, it is possible that our DNA is not perfectly extracted every time. But before use it in the amplification, purify the DNA using the DNA purification kit. Or else re-extract your DNA. Ideal concentration of template DNA, 30 to 50 nanogram, for 25 microliter reaction. The purity of DNA, 1.77 to 1.89, 260 over 280 ratio. 2. The concentration and the components of master mix. The TIC DNA polymerase amplifies the growing DNA strand by incorporating the DNTPS. That means, no DNTPS no amplification. However, the concentration of the DNTPS is very important, if the concentration is too high, the chance of nonspecific amplification increases. The reagents are wasted too. I always prefer to use the ready-to-use master mix which contains all the DNTPS, DATP, DGTP, DCTP, DTTP, along with the gel loading dye. The ready-to-use master mix is the best choice, it saves time during PCR reaction preparation as well as during the agarose gel electrophoresis. However, if you are enthusiastic enough to do it with yourself, that is nice. Because we can optimize the concentration of each DNTPS as per our requirement. The ideal concentration of each DNTPS in PCR reaction is, 200 micromole for each one. The total concentration of the DNTPS in the PCR reaction must be 800 micromole for 50 micromole. For 25 micromole use 400 micromole, 50 micromole each DNTPS, in the PCR reaction. I hope so you don't require calculations.
3. The types of DNA polymerase DNA polymerase is another important category 1 core ingredient. The DNA polymerase helps in synthesizing the DNA using the Mg2 plus as cofactor and DNTPS. The very first choice for any PCR reaction is the TIC DNA polymerase. The amplification speed of the TIC DNA polymerase is very high, it is thermostable and can work efficiently even at a higher temperature. However, it is not suitable for all type of amplification reactions. If the specificity is a prime goal of your PCR reaction, use hot start DNA polymerase. If proofreading is a prime goal of your PCR reaction then use high fidelity DNA polymerase. The high fidelity DNA polymerase amplifies DNA as well as removes the mismatched nucleotides from the growing DNA strand. From this table we can see that there are no more than one unit whatever the polymerase enzyme type. For primer designing. The primer is a short single-stranded DNA used to amplify the template DNA. The primer sequence is complementary to the target region of our DNA. It provides the free three end for the addition of DNTPS for TIC DNA polymerase. Designing the primer is an important agent in the PCR dry lab work. The primer 3 is the best choice for designing the primer for any PCR reaction. It provides all the information about how the primer amplifies and behaves during the amplification of a DNA. The ideal primer should have the following properties. Contains 50 to 55% of GC content. At least 18 to 22 nucleotides long. Does not contain secondary structure. The annealing temperature between 50 degrees Celsius to 65 degrees Celsius. The concentration of the primers. The stock primers are supplied under various concentrations we have to decide which concentration works best for our PCR reaction. If the concentration of the primer is higher than the desired one, primer dimers and nonspecific amplification occurs during the PCR reaction. On the other side, if the concentration of the primer is too low, it cannot amplify even the DNA of our interest. So, the concentration of primer is important to amplify DNA. The ideal concentration of the primer is 10 picomole for reverse and forward primer. Yet, the concentration of the primer more than this creates an unnecessary problem for the PCR reaction. Still, you have to optimize your own primer concentration using the gradient PCR machine. Read more on the PCR primer designing, PCR primer design guidelines. 5. Use of PCR reaction buffer. Adding the reaction buffer in each and every reaction is now an obvious process in the PCR reaction, but it is not a good practice, we do not need a PCR reaction buffer for all the PCRs. Yes, it is true. Do not use PCR buffer in all reactions, it is just a waste of money. For a simple and conventional PCR, the core ingredients work finely. The PCR reaction buffer is the combination of different chemicals which enhance the amplification efficiency of the reaction. Generally, the PCR reaction contains MgCl2, DMSO, KCl, NH2, SO4, albumin, betanins and other secret ingredients. Actually, it provides flexibility in the amplification. So nonspecific bindings and primer dimers are easily formed by using the PCR reaction buffer. So when to use PCR reaction buffer? You should know when to use the PCR buffer, when it required and how to use it. The PCR reaction buffer is required in the amplification of the longer templates, high GC rich template and for the sensitive templates. If your target DNA is too long you have to use the PCR enhancers to amplify it efficiently. If your PCR template DNA is high GC rich, you need some extra ingredients to push the amplification at its best. Notwithstanding this, for each and every reaction you must have to optimize using the PCR buffer and without PCR buffer if it is okay without extra ingredients then go for it. Why should waste money and chemicals? If it works without extra ingredients? Tips 1 if you are using a PCR buffer in a reaction and observed some nonspecific bands and primer dimers, try the reaction next time without using the PCR reaction buffer. You will definitely get good results. Tips 2. For more than one set of primers, 
multiplex reaction and internal control, you must include the PCR reaction buffer in it. Read more on multiplexing, multiplex PCR. 6. The concentration of template DNA. Before doing the PCR, you have to ask yourself, what problem can be occurred during the PCR? Nonspecific bindings. Primer dimers. No amplification. If you do not get any amplification, that is totally a different problem, we will discuss it later. The primer dimer and nonspecific bindings are actually a real problem which zones the PCR amplification. The concentration of the template also plays an essential role for the efficient amplification of DNA. If the concentration of DNA is too high, it facilitates nonspecific bindings. It always prefer to use 30NG DNA in the 25 microliter reaction and it works totally fine for my PCR reaction. De facto, the concentration lower than this can amplify the DNA appropriately. 7. The annealing temperature of the reaction. What is the end product or how your results appear on a gel is totally depends on the annealing temperature of the reaction. The annealing temperature is a temperature at which the primer binds to its complementary sequence onto our DNA. It is specific for primer. So if you compromise the annealing temperature, that will create a big problem over a period of time in your amplification and believe me, you cannot even resolve it. If your annealing temperature is too low, you will get so many bands in a gel. If it is too high no amplification observed. I suggest you perform a gradient PCR assay for getting an exact annealing temperature even if you have the annealing temperature. Still, you can trick your annealing temperature by adding ingredients such as MgCl2 and DMSO but it required a high level of expertise. A pinch of MgCl2 can amplify DNA even at a higher annealing temperature up to 2 degrees Celsius. But don't trick the PCR, instead. Use the gradient assay and determine your own PCR annealing temperature. For more detail on the annealing temperature, read this article, PCR Primer Design Guidelines. 8. The Concentration of MgCl2 MgCl2 is one of the pivotal ingredients of the PCR reaction. It boosts the activity of the DNA polymerase. Every enzyme required a metal ion as a cofactor for performing an enzymatic reaction. The Mg2 plus ions of the MgCl2 bind to the active site of the DNA polymerase and activate it. So you need some extra MgCl2 in the reaction. Although, the manufacturer already given it in the tick buffer or in the tick directly, that is up to the manufacturer. Even some of the companies provide their own buffer for reviving the DNA polymerase which contains the MgCl2. On the other side, if we are using a ready to use master mix, it must contain MgCl2 in it. Read the manufacturer's guide before using any reagent. If the MgCl2 is not provided in any of the reagents, use a pinch of it. Concertation of MgCl2, 1.0 mm to 2.0 mm, up to 5 mm, depending upon the requirement. Remember, if the concentration of the Mg2 plus is too high in the reaction, nonspecific bands will appear. So always optimize it before proceeding further. 9. PCR Cycles No one customizes it, instead, people are using it by default to 30 or 35 cycles. But in some cases, or we can say in almost all standard PCR cases there is no need to use PCR for 35 cycles, it wastes the power and consumes only more time. In addition, using more PCR cycles, the chance of the nonspecific bindings are increased along with the primer dimers. Ask why? Because after a certain period of timers, the template stops amplifying due to lack of DNTPS, took DNA polymerase, template DNA, or any other reagent, the amplification is ended but the dimers are continued to expand. And that creates a problem. So why to ruin our own PCR? Rather, Use fewer numbers of PCR cycles of 22 to 25. If less amplification occurred it will notify you to increase a couple of cycles in the next PCR and that is totally valid. Each step in the PCR cycles should be performed perfectly to maximize the yield of the reaction. The numbers of cycles matter a lot in quantitative real-time PCR.
10 Other Utilities What we had discussed so far is something very important to do while doing the PCR reaction. But other utilities that we are using in the PCR are necessary too. PCR tubes, Eppendorf tubes, and tips used during the reaction preparation plays an active role. The plastic ware used during the reaction preparation must be nuclease-free. The nuclease cuts DNA into smaller pieces. Therefore make sure that the tips and PCR tubes must be nuclease-free. Further, it must be sterile. If not, autoclave it before doing PCR because if it contains some of the foreign DNA, it might be amplified and falsify the results. Some of the other contaminants such as traces of other chemicals might hinder the DNA synthesize, therefore, it is necessary to keep all the utilities clean before preparing the PCR reaction. The last and the most important bonus tips for doing the excellent amplification is Prepare PCR reaction on ice Using ice is a debatable topic since long for the scientist. Some say it is fine without the ice. But I want to recommend to use the ice while preparing the PCR reaction, if you are using a normal TIC DNA polymerase. The TIC DNA polymerase actively involves in the synthesis of DNA even at a lower temperature. Therefore, when you are preparing the reaction, inside your PCR tube, the TIC starts amplifying anything which is complementary to the primers. This is a major reason for primer dimer and the nonspecific bindings in the PCR. Although the specificity achieved is high, the primer dimers still appear in the results due to this reason. If this is the case with you try doing the reaction on ice. Or Use the hot start tick DNA polymerase. We had already discussed the hot start DNA polymerase and hot start PCR in two of our articles. Conclusion PCR reaction preparation step is the key to success in the PCR and the successful PCR is the crucial step in the downstream applications such as DNA sequencing and hybridization. Therefore, the PCR reaction should be performed perfectly. The concentration of each and every component used in the PCR is one of the major factors on which your results are dependent.